Using Ableton Live's arranger view can give you a lot of freedom and flexibility on stage in running tracks, particularly if you're using locator. So let's take a look at, at this song file that I have pulled up here. So I've got my Ableton Live session, but I don't have locators in it right now currently. So it's hard for me to navigate and jump around my song. So what I wanna talk about in this video is how to add locators to your song uh, talk about exactly why I would do that even in the first place um, and how beneficial it is in a range of view. So let's go back to our file here. I'm going to mute my original song uh, in my, my track just for a moment. So all we're going to hear is this. One, we're going to hear click and two. we're going to hear our guide cue. Okay. So not very fun, not very entertaining, but it's enough for us to follow along with. Now I have beforehand pre formatted my song using what's called a markers track. And I use my guide cue here as a reference. So I listen for my guide and I hear Chorus. Chorus. And then a measure later, I add my chorus guide cue in. Uh, and I'm using that markers track so that I know exactly where my song sections are. But it's not incredibly useful to me quite yet. So what I'm going to do is use this markers track as a reference to add locators. Here's how we add locators to a song. So I'm going to go till I find this first break here. This is my intro. I'm going to go to measure three and put my mouse just below this measure here in the transport area. And you'll see um, uh, this little speaker icon show up here. So I could scrub my audio by clicking anywhere and, and playing immediately from there. But I'm going to go right below measure three and I'm going to right click and I'm going to do add locator. Okay. And so I'm going to type intro. So now I'm going to go to my next section here, which is my verse. I'm going to find where that line intersects, which is measure six. And I'm going to click add locator. So um, I'm going to go throughout this song and just add a few locators here so that I can follow through. Uh, and I can really quickly navigate my song. And I'll show you some of the cool, unique things we can do when we have locators in our song. Now, for me in particular, in the way that I use tracks, I actually don't name my locators. I just go throughout my session like this, and I really quickly uh, add locators. I can actually change this to see just one bar. We'll change my grid to be one bar. And this way, I could just really quickly go through and add locators in my file. And the reason uh, I'm not naming my locators is I have this markers track below here uh, that's containing all the names uh, for my song sections, okay? So we'll go through, we'll just add a couple locators uh, into our file. Now, why in the world are we adding locators in the first place? Well, there's a couple really cool benefits. Uh, let's start on verse two of our song. So I'm gonna click on verse two, this locator, press space bar, and we start right on verse two. Now let's start right on the intro. I can double click on a locator, start right on the intro if I want to. Let's jump ahead to our course, okay? Verse two, three, four, five, six. We'll click and that jumps us right to our course. Let's repeat our course. So again, I'm kind of like towards the beginning of the course, but who cares? Let's click this, boom. And at the next downbeat of one, we jump to the beginning of our course. Now we've talked about in previous tutorials, what's causing that, what's allowing that to happen. That's because of global quantization. You could see up here in the upper left-hand corner of my screen, it's set to one bar, which means that uh, at the next downbeat of one, it's gonna do whatever action I did, which was click course to jump back. I also have the ability to use my previous and next locator buttons here uh, to, for example, play my course and click previous locator to jump back or click uh, forward to navigate my song. Um, and I really like that because that allows me to completely navigate my song. Let me grab my MIDI controller here. Uh, allows me to completely navigate my song using a MIDI controller like this. This is the Oakboard Mini by Oaktone. Uh, and it just says play, stop, next, and previous. That's all I need when I'm using tracks live on stage uh, to navigate my session by doing previous and next. So with individual files, this is super helpful, but it becomes even more helpful uh, when I have a full set of songs. So if I open up a full Ableton Live session here and let you take a look at that, you'll see throughout my session, um, I have a lot of locators. I have locators that match each, each of my song sections that line up with that markers track. But then I also have locators to uh, signify the start of each song. So watch this. This is this is actually pretty cool. If I press three on my keyboard, it jumps to song three. If I press one on my keyboard, it jumps to song one and two is going to jump me to song two. The way I did that is I created a template and I'll tell you how to get this template for free in just a moment. I created a template and I pre-mapped those locators in my template to be uh, one, two and three. Let me show you on our mappings browser here. One two and three were assigned to those locators so that uh, when I press one, two or three, it's gonna automatically jump to those. And so uh, the, using locators, particularly in a full set is super helpful because you can decide, hey, instead of going from one into song two, 
uh, into song three. Let's do song one. And at the end of song one, I'm going to press space bar to stop us. Press three one, and then press two. space bar to start on song three. So adding locators to your arrangement view file can be super, super helpful, um, both at an individual song and then as well as in a full set to give you freedom and flexibility as well as allowing you to directly access a specific song. But as you'll find, and we talked about, I guess a couple weeks ago now on this channel, um, when you go to add locators in your file, they don't drag between your song files. So you're gonna have to have this markers track. If all that sounds overwhelming to you and you've never heard of a markers track before, there's no reason to fear. I've tried to make this as simple as possible for you. You could download my free tracks template that's gonna give you all the formatting you need, your click, tempo, guide, markers, original track tracks, pre-set up, ready to go so that you can drag them in to format your songs, then use your formatted songs to build a set. Uh, and in fact, you could take this free template format your songs, follow the process of formatting songs. And then from there, watch my series where I show you how to take a formatted song and build a set very quickly. And when you format your songs properly, which takes less than five minutes, you could build a set of multiple songs in less than five minutes. And the whole time have freedom and flexibility. It's going to be stable and you're going to not take hours and hours to do that. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, then head to from studio to stage.com slash template to download that template completely for free. You could share your name, your email, then you'll get some emails where I walk you through how to apply that to format songs and then eventually how to build a full set. And every day on the channel, if you want to learn more and go deeper, I post brand new content, brand new tutorial or podcast, 10 a.m. Central every single day here on the YouTube channel. But to make sure you see it, and don't miss out on anything, click the subscribe uh, button and make sure you hit the bell icon so that you're notified when I post new content. Now I post a lot of content every single day. So here's what I suggest, grab your phone, download the YouTube app. And uh, when a video goes live, if you have notifications turned on, you'll see a little pop-up show up. And if it sounds like something you're interested in, click through and watch it. If not, ignore and watch the next one. So hope to see you tomorrow, 10 a.m. Central. And if not, then the next day. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody. Bye.